Hello everybody, welcome back to Life Stories. My name is Trent, and I hope you're doing awesome as always during these crazy times. Today, we got more stories coming at you from Reddit slash I don't work here lady. So, buckle in, because we're getting started. Our first story is titled, It wasn't Karen, it was me. I don't know why bots took down my story, but here it is again. It doesn't break any rules at all, so I imagine it's just Reddit being silly. Aye, just a little background. I conked my head pretty hard on an F-18 fighter jet back in the Navy. I currently have some mild memory problems, and kinda go into phases where I'm awake, but I can't really tell what I'm doing. It's an odd sensation. When I'm tired or didn't eat well, I just go into this phase where I'm physically competent. I could juggle knives and tightrope, but could not tell you how many fingers you're holding up or repeat your name when you tell me to my face. All this being said, it wasn't nearly that bad, which makes me feel terrible. You see, I'm 6 foot 7 inches tall. I wear my hair very short, so the massive jagged scar on my head is very visible. Until people hear me talk, they usually shuffle away from me and hold their purses, children, or whatever closer, and try to stand near someone else. It's a little offensive, but I can't blame them. Books and covers and all, but I do look like a bad guy. Now, the story is simple. I was running out of food in my fridge, and I just got off of a 12-hour shift. I didn't need much. It might sound gross, but a super easy fast food is hummus and hot dogs. If you get the higher quality hot dogs, slather them some hummus, and a line of mustard, it's great. But still, clearly bachelor food. So, I go to this place that sells bulk food, mostly for mom and pop restaurants or big church events, that kind of stuff. I go there because you can get these great hot dog buns, 3 bucks for a 24 pack, then you can get like half a gallon of really good hummus for 15 bucks, it's great. But I almost instantly made a horrible mistake. I came in, and just 20 feet in and to the left is the breads and buns. I come in and notice a woman. It's been a long day and I'm very hungry, so I only vaguely notice she's wearing mild business attire just like the employees, and some sort of blue apron, just like the employees as well. And to top it all off, she's in front of the hot dog buns, shuffling buns off her cart and onto the shelf. I walk up and grab the last bag of hot dog buns in her cart, and loudly, playfully announce, YOINK! She turns around and stares at me as if I just stole her purse. Something triggers inside me, and I know something's wrong. I'm still trying to keep up my happy tone, despite how tired I am and it takes me a full five seconds of this poor woman staring at me, worried and almost shivering, when I finally noticed. Her cart has eggs, milk, frozen items, energy drinks, and a few other items in smaller amounts. And her purse is on the cart, and the apron is actually a blue stripe on her shirt. I nearly break down, apologizing, carefully placing her hot dog buns in the cart, and keep apologizing. Thankfully, she either was nice or realized how upset I had made myself with this mistake, and finally had to all but grab either side of my face and say it was fine right into my eyes. I still felt horrible. I'm huge, and I have to be so damn careful not to hurt people just going about my daily life, and I hate scaring the heck out of innocent people. I can be mean when I need to, but I really hate being the bad guy. I got buns and my hummus, still looking down and barely even paying attention to the world around me, letting the embarrassment and pain grind away at me, when all of a sudden I hear a playful voice say, YOINK, and suddenly my hummus is gone. I look over to see the woman smiling and laughing before she hands it back to me and tells me, don't tear yourself up, it was an honest mistake and you handled it really well. I still tear myself up about it, but it was a big step on the path to feeling better. We're coming right out the gate with a super wholesome one, and I think it's super fantastic. Let's keep it going. It probably won't keep going, will it? You know, Karens. Moving right along, our next story is titled, I'm a park supervisor, but not this park supervisor. A bit long, sorry. As I've said in other posts, I'm a retired state park supervisor, so the story is from a while back. Every Monday, we had to turn in weekly reports at our headquarters. There are a lot of things we're supposed to turn in then, but the important one was our weekly financials. That's to account for how many camping permits we sold, rentals, picnic or beach passes, etc., and how much money we took in. We did one for each day, and one for the week. I was known as being OCD about them, so mine were always right, and I'd often walk other park supervisors or assistants through any issues they had. 
On this Monday, I turned in my reports, no problems, and started putting our supply order into the truck. That's when my boss came out and said, Hey, Sendex, can you uh, stop by Dee's Park on your way back? She can't print out her financials. I replied, yeah, I'll see what I can do. The reason I was asked is that I used to be a systems admin and owned a computer shop before this, and our IT people were notorious for slow response times. As a result, I frequently got called first to see if I could fix it. I didn't mind, because Dee was not just a friend of mine, she'd been my boss when I'd started, and I'd learned a lot about running parks from her. I stopped by, and Dee was getting frantic. She told me that everything had worked until yesterday, and while she was able to put the information in, she wasn't able to pull up the report page for printing. I told her to show me what she did. She pulled up the browser to access our reporting system, and right away I saw the problem. Why are you using Chrome? I asked. Dee replied, what? What do you mean? I just clicked on the icon to do my report, she said. Now, I have no problem with Chrome or Firefox, but the official browser was Internet Explorer. The system we used for reports had browser-specific scripts, so you couldn't use any other browser. I explained this to Dee, and she growled. It turned out that yesterday, her daughter and grandson had come for a visit, and while Dee had been out taking care of something, her daughter had decided to upgrade their computer by installing Chrome on it. Of course, one of the things it does is ask if you want to make it the default browser, and she'd clicked yes, hence the difficulty in printing reports. It was an easy fix, I just had to change it back, which I did. I then said, now try it, to D, and lo, the report popped up. She thanked me, and I said, no problem, glad it was a simple fix, but tell your daughter to not upgrade the work computers. I left the office and was headed to my truck when this woman came charging up to me. Late 40s or early 50s, sort of chubby, blonde, short hair. A Karen. Are you the park supervisor? She said. Um, I'm a park supervisor, but not... That was all I got out. She proceeded to start yelling about how my park ranger had ruined her family's weekend. Now, this park didn't have a park ranger. She was talking about D. I tried to get a word in edgewise, but nope, she was on a tear about that lady. I realized I was going to have to wait her out. She proceeded to tell me all about how Dee had ruined her weekend, while I started mentally adding up the various park rules and state laws this woman and her family had broken. By the time she had wound down, I'd counted five park rules, two misdemeanors, and a probable felony, and thinking that Dee must have been in a forgiving mood. She finally ended with, And I want her fired! I said, I can't do that. She yelled, Why the hell not? I said, Because she's the supervisor of this park. I'm the supervisor of a different park. I can say that I wouldn't have ruined your weekend. She said, Really? I said, Absolutely. If you'd been at my park, I'd have had the police come in to give you tickets and then evicted you. I'd have ruined your life. She stared at me for a second and said, I'm going to call the headquarters about this. I said, I'm sure you will when you get home. And then I smiled and in a cheery voice added, Now, have a safe trip. She huffed, turned around, and stormed back to her car. I waved as she left. As her car was disappearing, I heard laughter coming from behind me. Dee had come out of the office and had tears in her eyes from laughing. She said, I, I can't believe you just did that. I said, well, I figured I should show her just how much worse it could get. Dee said, I, I always thought people from my former park were exaggerating when they called you the supervisor from hell. I thought you were really easygoing, but I can see now why they called you that. I said, I don't like doing it, but when the situation calls for it, well, I realize my inner a-hole. We laughed and I went back to my park. No, the Karen never called, or if she did, it never made it back to us. All things considered, I feel like this could have escalated a lot further. I, uh, I'm not very well versed in what park rangers police, but, uh, a possible felony? That sounds serious! Leave it to the Karens to go around committing felonies without even realizing it. <laughs> and with that well-balanced episode out of the way, we are out of time. We had one that was pretty wholesome, and one with, as usual, a Karen getting super shut down.
which is all right in my books. But we're going to have to move on now. I want to thank all of you for tuning in to another episode of Life Stories, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're all staying safe. Don't forget, so you don't get bored, to like, comment, and subscribe for all the Reddit content we got cooking up coming your way. And I hope to see you guys soon.